I didn't even know what I wanted to study, let alone know what AI was when I started um, university. I didn't even know about computer science or coding whatsoever until I actually attended uh, Stanford. So know that you're not, you're not alone and know that it's always cool to just learn new things for the heck of it. My time as a student, believe it or not, I, devel I devoted m almost 75% of my time during my high school career towards music, you know? And it's actually something that I wanted to pursue for full time, even in college. Um, as a freshman, sophomore, and even junior in high school, I thought that I was gonna be a music major and study like composition or jazz or something like that, right? And I didn't care much for academics in the traditional sense. Um, why is this? Well, I did dedicate 25% of my time to academics, right? But this is more so to the fact that not very much was expected from me in high school, right? Nobody in my high school was expected to devote their time studying math or literature or read Edgar Allan Poe or William Shakespeare or, you know, John Keats or what have you, right? And because of that, I only did what I had to do, right? To be a good student, which wasn't that much compared to everyone else that I went to high school with. But something that I did know was that I absolutely loved learning. There's no way that I didn't know this at a very young age. And I knew that I had to find a way to keep doing it well after high school, whether it had to do with music or science or math. I just knew that it was something that I had to keep doing. And so the next thing is a little bit obvious, right? What do you do when you just wanna learn uh, 24 seven and you come from uh, not so good high school? Well, what you do is you apply to a university with one of the lowest acceptance rates and hope that they'll give you a chance, right? Which is essentially what I did. But I actually ended up getting into my, my own surprise and I actually took this picture uh, my first day on campus as a freshman. So I just knew that I had to find somewhere where learning was the number one priority, right? And if you guys, if some of the uh, teachers here went to Stanford, then you know all about this intellectual vitality stuff. And so uh, I read up on that and I was like, oh man, this place definitely seems like somewhere I could really go to, right? And it's just by luck that, you know, that Stanford offers one of the best computer science uh, programs. Because I didn't know what I wanted to study, I ended up taking classes in every subject my freshman year. So I took classes in mathematics. I took classes in linguistics, philosophy, psychology, computer science, chemistry. So I just ended up enrolling in a bunch of different classes that really interested me. But that was my problem. I couldn't choose just one thing to study. So there was this list that I had to you know, follow math. I mean, who doesn't like math, right? Math is awesome, right? In computer science, well, algorithms and computation, you know, were subjects that were super novel to me, you know, coming in as a frosh, right? As a freshman, but I was hooked, right? Although it took some convincing, most certainly my first computer science class was in all sunshines and rainbows. There were a couple of sleepless nights, but they were well worth it. Um, philosophy, I mean, I, I mean, I was presented with questions I never thought about, right? Are we really just a bunch of cells working together to form a whole? You know, are our thoughts something physical or something different entirely, right? And then you have psychology, right? How does your experience influence who you are later in life? How does your experience as a child with respect to nutrition, language, and studying affect who you are later? right? How does your adolescent experience in middle school affect your development later in your adult life, right? Questions like this really uh, fascinated me. And finally, we have linguistics, which is, you know, a really big uh, field of study. And I was more, more interested in how we actually assign meaning to words. So these are all subjects that I wanted to find space for in my schedule. And I was really trying to find out how I could achieve that. I thought that I had to major in just math or in just computer science or just philosophy, right? And that I really couldn't find something that integrated all these things into one field. So 
This is exactly the point that I was, I was just making. I had to find a way to make math, philosophy, linguistics, psychology, and computer science all fit into one thing so that I could study that and be happy with what I was studying, right? I felt like maybe I would be a little bit distraught over the fact that I was studying math all the time and couldn't afford to take a couple of psychology classes on the side or take a linguistics class here or there. And so suddenly it became increasingly more clear to me that what I should study is AI as a whole. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm not trying to say is that I was meant to study AI because that's a very different thing to say. What it made sense for me is that I should study it, right? I felt like I could take my passion for music as an example and apply it to other things, right? I, could, I didn't just have to limit myself to one area of study. I could apply my passions to a multitude of things. And so the math aspect is taken care of. I mean, Q learning on the left is how, you know, we develop AIs that can play chess uh, or, you know, general adversarial AIs when you're playing games by yourself. On the right, you'll see um, gradient descent, which is actually how we perform updates to weights in the back, right? And then if you guys remember that really cute lecture about apples and oranges, well, that math is at the very bottom, right? So all the math aspect was taken care of. So I was more than happy with that. Linguistics is also taken care of. I mean, natural language processing is its own subfield within AI. I mean, just being able to Google natural language processing involves a, involves a whole lot of NLP altogether. And finally, you have philosophy and psychology are, are taken care of in one fell swoop. Um, comparing artificial intelligence, more specifically, neural networks with the biological implementation of our brains is a psychological and philosophical topic altogether. Um, another thing that most of y'all might know is like something called the Turing test, which is the ability for a human to distinguish uh, communication between a machine and a person, right? And whether or not we can distinguish them would tell you a lot about whether or not the machine is intelligent to some capacity. And then finally, you have some ethical aspects of AI, which a lot of people worry about, which is whether or not a general AI could take over the world, right? And so these are all things that are like really nice and really fun to talk about. So it's great that I found a way to involve all of them. And computer science, well, computer science is the main actor in all of this. There's no way for any of this to move forward without computer science at the forefront. So that was taken care of for me. And I mean, a lot of people already spoke to this. You can do anything with AI, medical applications. You can conduct your own research and investigations, which is something I did, right? You can investigate how gaming actually works in adversarial AI, right? From chatbots to voice assistants to instant language translation, right? The list goes on and on. I just wanna leave you all with this. So if you, if, you guys, if you guys love learning and you find yourself passionate about many of these subjects, then just know that AI is the perfect thing for you to learn.